So today we're going to make smoked paprika. This is a wonderful way to use up extra peppers out of your garden or even when they're in season and you can buy them at the farmer's market at a really good price. Smoked paprika, when you make it fresh, it's just so delicious. I use this in all kind of chowders. I'll use it in my spice blends for rubs for meat like pork shoulder on the grill. I'll use it in chicken that I also smoke on the grill. The smoked paprika adds such a another level of flavor to just about anything that you add it to and like I said when it's fresh and you've made it yourself it's just so good so I want to show you how I make it and today I'm going to start with some sweet bell peppers for a sweet smoked paprika and so I'm using these little bell peppers here I'm also using some giant Marconi peppers I had a lot of those I couldn't use them fresh I was just too busy so I thought they would be perfect for smoked paprika. This is a sweet smoked paprika. I also had a couple of these sweet Italian peppers. Down in my other garden, I had some of the habanada peppers. I've explained that to my subscribers before. This is a habanero pepper that does not have the heat, so it's got that real fruity flavor. And then over here are some cayenne peppers. This is called a cow horn cayenne pepper. I'll use this for a spicy smoked paprika. It's not real hot. The Scoville rating on it is anywhere from 2,500 to 5,000, about the same as a jalapeno. So it won't be real hot, but I thought it would be great to make a little smoked paprika with it. So now we'll go ahead and start by, of course, wash your peppers. And we are going to just prep them by removing all of the seeds. Now I want to say something about how I'm going to do this, and that is I am going to use a dehydrator. Now if my peppers had a very thin wall on them, in other words, not a lot of flesh, I could do this in the oven because my oven goes down to 170 and that would be a good temperature range for peppers. But because of the bell peppers and these larger cayenne, I really need to use a dehydrator because if my temperature is too high, what happens is the outside of that pepper will harden and then the inside won't dry well. We certainly wouldn't be able to make a powder out of it. But however, this habanada here has a very thin wall and not a lot of flesh and that would be very easy to do in my oven. So I just wanted to make a note of that. You need to have a low temperature for these larger peppers that have a thick wall on them. Now my understanding is in Spain where you get a lot of really good smoked paprika, they use oak. However, I don't have oak chips. What I do have are some apple chips and I also had some mesquite chips. So I used a combination of those for the paprika. Of course, it's not smoked paprika if you don't use wood. You want to use smoke to give it a really good flavor. Those peppers are just going to soak up that smoked flavor and that's what makes it wonderful. I always soak my chips about 15 minutes before I start smoking them. Now I went into a lot of depth in my jerk chicken recipe on how I prep my grill, how I smoke um, chicken or whatever it is I'm using. So I'll leave a link for you in case you missed that video and you want more detail on how I do this. But I just use my Weber grill. I'm putting all these peppers in a big basket that I already had in my pantry. And I'll just add my chips to those hot coals so they start smoking good. And I kind of keep my temperature at around 220 for peppers, 200. It does not have to be very high for something like this. And keep it covered. And I think I ended up smoking these for about three hours. And they'll start to look really wrinkled and limp. And so that's when you know they're ready. You'll notice the, a big color change on them and they'll smell so much different. They completely transform. And so now on my dehydrator sheets, I'm just laying them all out on a single layer. I'm separating out the sweet from the hot and then the habanadas. I wanna have one sheet, one dehydrator sheet for each one. And so now we're ready to go. Like I said, you want to make sure you keep them on a single layer. Don't let them overlap so the air flows really nice above and below. And the dehydrator that I use is called an Excalibur. I use this for a lot of different herbs when I dry those, of course, all the time for peppers. So I like to put this outside on my covered porch or either in my garage when I use it. I really didn't have to for this one because these peppers weren't all that hot, but especially when they're hot, you need to do this out of your living area because those hot peppers are pretty intense. 
and plus I don't like the constant humming noise of a dehydrator so I like to put that away and just forget about it and check on it you know after about 12 hours and then keep adding time if I need it now the one thing I really like about this dehydrator is that it has a chart here which it tells you what's the best temperature for whatever it is you're drying and it does herbs wonderfully I mean it really dries herbs great and I dry a lot of herbs so I love that really low temperature setting for herbs and then of course you can do beef jerky in it for vegetables it recommends around 125 I'm going a little bit lower just because I don't want like I said that outside part of the pepper to harden on me so I'll just go low and slow on here and the weather was pretty humid when I was drying these peppers so I usually start out my timer at around 12 hours and then I'll go back and I'll check on it at 12 hours and see how they're doing. That is usually not enough time. And then I'll add about another four hours. If you live somewhere where it's very humid, you may have to go even longer. So just check on them. Let them cool down about 10 minutes after you've taken them out of your dehydrator and then test them. Right when they come out of the dehydrator, they're going to be flexible, but let them cool and then check. They should break very easily and crumble very easily. And then I'll just transfer these in small batches to my coffee grinder and they will just turn it right into a powder very easily. So once I've ground all of the sweet peppers, I want to strain them real good through here and make sure there's not any clumping or I didn't, uh, you know, grind it real well. I do have some here, um, probably some of the skin left on there. You can certainly pull your skin off before you do this. I've done that before, but it was way too much trouble. So <laughs> at any rate, I went ahead and I ground those as well. And then back through the strainer. All right, so there you go. Look at that beautiful color. Uh, I want to go ahead and dry this just a little bit more while I work on the rest of the pepper. So I set my oven at around 180 and put the pepper on a parchment paper, put it in the oven, and let that dry out just a little bit more before I put it in an airtight container. And then I just continue to work on the rest of my peppers. So here's the powder out of the oven. I guess I had it in there about um, probably 15 minutes. It's looking nice and airy and fluffy and that's how you want it. And now we'll just strain it one more time. And into a little spice jar it goes. I'll just use a little funnel here. And I also like to make sure that I label them. I try a lot of different blends throughout the year typically, and I want to make sure I know what I'm using in case it turned out really good. I'll know what it was. So there you go. I hope that you can try this very soon, either with the peppers you're growing in your garden or with some that you can pick up at the market because it's a fun way to make fresh smoked paprika and you will love making it. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to share it on your favorite social media platform. I sure would appreciate it. I'm only on Google Plus and YouTube right now. So whenever you're out there sharing my videos, it sure does help. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day. Bye.